What's up everybody? Up to this point we've been looking at static fluids, fluids not moving. Now we're going to be looking at uh, fluid flow, so fluids in motion. So before we do that, we do want to kind of just define a couple things. We are going to be talking about ideal fluids. And so three, three kind of characteristics we typically talk about. One is incompressibility. So in other words, uh, as we have, let's say this is our, our fluid as it's flowing, no matter what it does, it's always going to maintain, it's not going to be pushed together. So in other words, the density between the fluids is going to stay the same or within the fluid is going to stay the same. The second thing we want to look at is a steady state flow versus kind of non uh, versus turbulent flow. So for example, um, let's say we're watching water flow down a river and let's say we have a rock here. We're going to just say the water is going to flow around the rock in just kind of a nice steady motion. Whereas in reality, it might kind of bump against the rock. There might be kind of this push back from the rock itself, causing kind of what we would call like turbulence in this region. So again, we're just going to assume that it's nice and steady state. And the last thing would be the viscosity. We're going to assume that it's low viscosity or non-viscous whatsoever. So imagine like if you have um, uh, like maple syrup. So maple syrup, there's all these kind of like internal frictions going on with maple syrup. And so it kind of it, it flows slowly, right? Maple syrup flows much different than say like water, which would have, have a low viscosity. So we're going to actually assume that it's non-viscous whatsoever, so there's kind of no internal friction at all. All right, let's go ahead and look at some major ideas now. So let's imagine we have like a pipe. We have some fluid flowing through said pipe. Okay, here's my fluid. We're just going to draw it as atoms here. And this is flowing through the pipe. Okay, so one term we want to look at what's, is what's called mass flow rate. And just like it sounds, a mass flow rate is essentially the amount of mass that flows through some region per second or per time. The symbol we use, uh, we'll use an M with a little dot over it. So it's the amount of mass that flows per time. So if you're just watching this and, you know, let's say you have a stopwatch and you're going to essentially account the amount of mass that flows through in a second, that would be our mass flow rate. Now it's kind of hard to do this with fluids. So typically what we'll do instead is we'll use density. So remember density is equal to mass over volume or mass would be equal to density times volume over time. But what is volume? So remember this is actually has kind of an area here. It's this surface area, cross-sectional area I should say. So this has this little area here. So the amount of mass that flows through, the volume I should say that flows through here would be kind of this area, cross-sectional area, times the distance, right? That would be the volume that flows through here. So we could write this as density, area, distance over time. But what is distance over time? Distance over time is a velocity. So our mass flow rate, we're going to go ahead and define this, well, two ways, I guess. One would be the density, well one would be the mass per time, which makes sense. And the second one would be the density times the area times the distance. Oops, that's a mistake, right? Hope you notice that. This should be, let's see if we can erase this. Come on, eraser. This should be times velocity. So why is this important? Well, let's imagine that our pipe, let's say it changes. So let's say it goes to something like this. Okay. So you hopefully know, or hopefully this makes sense, is that as this flows, so let's say it's flowing over here, right? This direction. And then as it goes into this region, we want the mass to stay the same. In other words, if there's like a hundred atoms here per second, hundred atoms flowing per second, there should also be 100 atoms flowing per second. 
Okay, this is the concept of conservation of mass, right? You can't just destroy these atoms. You can't somehow get more atoms. It must be the same. So in order for that to happen, the only possible way is that these atoms, when they flow through here, they must go faster. So, okay, so these are going to have to, in this kind of region here, the atoms must speed up. Now you've probably all done this before. If you put your fingers uh, over a hose on the end of the hose, basically you're constricting the area of that hose and the water that comes out is going to speed up as it moves through there. And again, the reason for this is that mass has to be conserved. So in other words, the mass flow rate, let's write this, the mass flow rate initial has to equal the mass flow rate final. It must be conserved in this situation. So if we continue to write this, we could write this as mass flow rate one, area one, velocity one. So that's at the beginning, say over in this region over here, right? That must equal the density two, area two, velocity two. In fact, if this is an ideal fluid, then that means the density is constant, right? So in other words, these two densities would cancel out. And we're simply left with A1V1 equals A2V2. This is often referred to as the continuity equation. And we're just essentially saying, we're just kind of pointing out this relationship that you probably already know conceptually, which is that as the area decreases, the velocity must increase so that this mass flow rate would be continuous. In fact, we often define this A1V1 a little bit differently. If we go back here at our, continu our mass flow rate equation, check this out, V over T. What do you think we might call V over T or AV? Well, V over T, just like M over T is mass flow rate, V over T, let me clean this up just a bit, Let's move it up. V over T is defined as the volume flow rate. And with ideal fluids, it often makes more sense to talk about the volume flow rate versus the mass flow rate. And so that would be AV. So notice if we look at here, this equation, A1, B1, our continuity equation, is really relating the mass, the, the volume flow rates to one another. And if we look at our picture, hopefully that makes sense up here. I even drew it, drew it that way. If you look at this, this is going to be a certain amount of volume, right? And for the mass flow, for mass flow rate to work, for conservation of mass to work, this volume, it's going to kind of squeeze in this area, but it's going to have this longer distance. So that this A, D, this volume, should be the same as this A, little a, big D, and this is big A, little d, the two volumes should be the same. So the next video we're going to go ahead and look at an example of this.